hello and welcome back and that is right a number of you have been in contact over the last few weeks months and dare i say for the majority of 2022 and asked a very familiar question namely should you buy the ds920 plus still now why that slightly convoluted intro well because this isn't the first time i've made a video like this indeed this is kind of like the third time i've made a video like this about whether you should go for the ds920 now why is that do i just like being repetitious not particularly but the fact remains that this nas has now been around in the market for about two and a half years commercially and in that time a number of us thought synology would have refreshed it with a 922 or 923 but right now at the time of recording in october 2022 there is still no confirmed refresh of this device and with prime day sales and black friday sales and non-stop sales where we keep seeing this device on offer, it doesn't matter if you're in the US, UK, Germany, Australia, Canada, anywhere, this device keeps going on sale. A number of us do still wonder, right now, after two and a half years, is this device still worth buying? And unlike the videos that came before this one, we've got more information to go on, notwithstanding the fact there have been several new releases from Synology in that time period. But on top of that, we've also got kind of indications that there is going to be a DS923 down the road. So with all of that information in mind, I think we've got a slightly clearer view and a, a lot more information to go on when we're thinking about whether we should buy this 920. So let's crack on. I'm going to give you four reasons why you should just go for it right now, get off the fence and just buy the DS920 Plus. And I'm going to give you four reasons why you should sit on the fence, not only because of a potential DS923 Plus, which will, of course, we will be talking about tangentially and directly, but also simply why this device might be worth leaving in your rear view mirror anyway. Let's crack on with number one. That's right, first thing, I want to talk about Plex. Now, when I say I want to talk about Plex, I'm, of course, more precisely talking about the CPU inside this device, the J4125. When this was launched in 2020, I think it was like June, July, depending where you are in the world, when the 920 hit the market, that CPU inside at the time was pretty much the darling CPU for that price point, at five to 600 nicker to run a bunch of applications. But like a lot of four bay raid enabled home and prosumer boxes, that kind of middle ground there in the middle of the portfolio for most of these brands, a lot of users aim to get this device for Plex, that viable alternative to going for the likes of Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Prime, and more. They want their media on their own server, but with all that lovely livery there, the trailers, the presentation, the cast list, the reviews, and all of those wonderful graphics. And right now, if you are looking at Synology for a NAS for Plex Media server, and your demands are not incredibly highfalutin, all mad 4K stuff in HDR and HEVC type, this is one of the best Synologies still, right now, even after two and a half years, I hate seagulls, for that kind of user. If you're looking at a Synology NAS for Plex, get off the fence. This is still a great device. And also, when we get onto point two, you will see another reason why that is particularly pertinent. But for now, for you Plex users out there, because of the CPU inside, and even if you're not going to use Plex, by the way, that goes for multimedia generally with Video Station, as well as if you want to utilize that Plex fix that you can use on this device to redirect uh, the driver if you're running DSM 6.2 and indeed DSM 7. It allows you to, even, to use the hardware transcoding and the embedded graphics on this within Plex that much better for hardware transcoding. So again, if you're going for Plex, go for the 920. That is right. I alluded to this in the introduction and a little bit on point one, but the price point of this device is remarkably um, attractive right now when you scale it up against other four bays at the moment. Now, what I mean by that is there's a few things that have happened in the last few years since 2020. I bet you know one of the big ones, right? The pandemic, of course. But its effect on the supply chain alongside hardware shortages, alongside uh, conflict and trade wars throughout that period, and, of course, climate change and other things that have just affected the market in a billion ways. The result, billion thousands of ways, the result is that newer generation devices are arriving on the market 
just more expensive they just are with hardware shortages meaning that they are lower supply and that also having its impact on the buy sell cost the result is that current generation four bay devices that are comparable to this aren't reaching the same form of parity at release pricing and they are hitting the market a good 10 to 15 percent more expensive and once you're dealing with a device that knocks around in the hundreds of pounds or dollars that does make an impact whereas this device right now the 920 is doing a banging job price wise you can pick it up even outside of seasonal sales for about 450 pounds dollars or euros forget the conversion you are you can see it knocking around on different sites at that 450 mark and then you get seasonal sales dropping it down even more i hate my phone so right now i do strongly recommend if you're looking for an intel or x86 64 bit processor nas and you want to get a deal on a raid 5 enabled box the 920 is absolutely leaps and bounds ahead of what is out there from not only Synology but a lot of brands as well as they roll out their 22 and 23 series boxes. Now this next point is the tiniest bit nebulous but when it comes to choosing between the DS920 Plus and newer generation Synology NASes there is a conversation that's getting louder and louder and that is to do with hard drive compatibility. Right now in Synology's own software DSM 7.1 we're really seeing a shift in terms of support and compatibility by Synology erring more towards their own drive media. Now, this is something that has been happening long after the 920 arrived on the scene. So consequently, whether you go to the compatibility lists or just hedge your bets and go for the likes of a WD Red or installing a Seagate Iron Wolf, um, you know, a standard 4TB drive, these are going to go in there with absolutely no changes to DSM in terms of presentation, no changes in terms of official compatibility on their own pages, and basically a completely frictionless experience. However, if you go with one of the newer generation boxes like the 1522 Plus, uh, another NAS we will be referencing a lot later on, as well as the RS422 Plus and larger scale devices uh, in the, the newer generation devices, what you find is compatibility is prioritized towards their own media, such as this, the HAT5300. This is a 16TB drive. Uh, they are Toshiba um, MG series drives, enterprise grade, and they have Synology tailored firmware on board. And although in the early days there was a little bit of back and forth with regards to DSM's compatibility and support of third-party drives and what services you could use and what was notified on screen, things are a lot better now. But there's still no avoiding that there is question marks still floating in the air about utilizing newer generation Synology NASes and not using Synology Media and choosing to go with Seagate or WD drives. Again, this is not one of those horrible things where you're not going to be able to use your device. You are. Those drives are going to work with the new generation Synology drives as well as the old. However, they are going to present you with notifications about compatibility listings of drives and also the compatibility list on the newer generation of Synology NASes that we've seen thus far have been a little bit more crafted a little bit more you know just smaller overall so going for the ds920 plus removes any of the question marks from that so you can go ahead and use the likes of seagate and wd inside the ds920 in a way that the newer generation may add the odd little blip or hurdle along the way for you And this last point is something that, again, is sounds going to run out of the hourglass a little bit on this one. But when you get a Synology NAS, you get the hardware and the software at the same time. It's a complete solution there. And a lot of the time, the money you're paying for a Synology, I would argue more of that, the 6040 perhaps, is going towards the software DSM, Disk Station Manager. Now, DSM is currently in version 7.1. And newer generation devices are going to roll out with DSM 7.1 straight off the bat. And you won't even be able to install any older versions on those newer boxes, which is probably for the best because you want the latest software and firmware on there. However, there is still a large contingent of users who haven't made the shift from DSM 6.2 onto DSM 7. Now, they've got their own reasons. One, they are the sort of people that, again, perfectly fine to look at Windows 11 and go, no, you're all right, I'll stick with Windows 10, I know how that works. Two, these are people that know that there are certain features and services in DSM 6.2 which aren't available in DSM 7, such as, for example, Synology 
photo station, Synology Moments, an application that has photo recognition, AI photo recognition, but whereas the DSM-7 um, photo application, which is a merger of those two apps known as Synology Photos, has AI photo recognition, that recognition is limited only to facial recognition. Whereas the older, um, uh, the legacy applications on 6.2 have got thing recognition and also in photo station, a completely separate business doorway, if you will, with a lot more featured services and options. A lot of these are now available in Synology Photos and DSM 7.1, but by no means all of them. And there's a lot of users, particularly photo users, that actually still prefer 6.2 overall, which is still supported by Synology. That's really, really important. Currently, the DSM 6.2 and DSM 7 and 7.1, these are all getting, you know, security and patch updates regularly. So going with 6.2 does not remove um, any kind of security support from Synology. They are committed to 6.2 for many years to come. And on top of that, you've got support of things like Wi-Fi devices. DSM-7 uh, has kind of, you know, removed or at least limited the USB support on a number of hardware peripherals, which are still supported on 6.2. Network adapters, Wi-Fi dongles, and more. There are just little tiny features and services in 6.2, which aren't in DSM-7. And 6.2 has also had a significant, uh, larger and more significant period of time for people to research, come up with little kind of hacks and little moves around and with github introducing little add-ons there now why am i telling you this long extended story nice and simple at 9 point, uh, 920 plus is almost certainly going to arrive with dsm 6.2 on board because these devices have been rolling out and probably the last units were produced a matter of month um you know earlier this year but on top of that, with uh, the 920, you can still download DSM 6.2 from Synology's own website. You can flash the device back to 6.2 if you choose. Whereas newer generation devices, you're probably not going to be able to download DSM 6.2 because Synology is rolling these devices out on DSM 7 and 7.1 straight off the bat. So if you're interested in 6.2, or if you're an older generation Synology user that wants to maintain uh, 6.2 on a newer device, go for the 920. But... As good as everything I've said today is, you've got to remember it's not as clear cut as that. And any technology we buy, we demand future proof, and we want the device to still be relevant in a few years. So let me give you the four reasons why, even if you do see this on a decent little offer, you should maybe stay on the fence, sit on your wallet, and wait a bit longer. That's right. When I mention future proofing and all that stuff, you know, moving forward, it's worth highlighting that regardless of any talk about multimedia, regardless of talk about Plex in my previous video, the CPUs in the newer generation devices are almost certainly going to be more efficient, more powerful, and get more done. Um, you know, point versus point with their hardware. And one of the best examples we have is the 1522 plus this was the five bay that was launched in summer 2022 and a lot of users myself included are starting to believe that this is the shape of the prosumer um series disk station from synology as we're seeing more and more devices move and shift gears from Intel uh, based uh, architecture over to AMD. We saw it uh, when they made the switch from Intel Atom on over to uh, embedded Ryzen V 1500B. We saw with this device a move away from Celeron onto uh, the R1600, another embedded Ryzen. And we're also starting to see things like the SAS based series, the SA, the new refreshes in the SA64 and 6200 arrive with AMD EPYC. Uh, uh, CPUs. They're very powerful CPUs indeed. Now, with those newer generation CPUs, it, let's go down that road that we believe, although it isn't by any means clear cut yet, that they will opt for the same CPU inside this with onto a follow up to this one, say a DS93 arriving with the R1600. That CPU, although it is going to have something of a shortfall when it comes to multimedia and Plex, in every other regard, is going to get the job done better. When we've done testing on this device, uh, we managed to get 10 GPE out of this device with just four drives in a RAID 5 environment. That CPU, a dual core, four thread, it has a lot of oomph and a lot of efficiency and can be burst up to 3.1 gigahertz. It's a more powerful CPU as well with an initial clock speed of 2.6. So outside of multimedia, that almost certainly a newer generation device is guaranteed to be better 
than the DS920 in every other regard, both in and outside of DSM. Which takes us a little deeper into the subject of processors there, because it's not even just about that the CPU is going to be able to run those services better. In terms of hardware, the scalability is also going to be better too. So for example, most of the newer generation CPUs we're seeing arriving on the 22 and even the 21 series were PCIe Gen 3 by default on their PCI lanes, whereas the older generation, the 9.2 there, was running on PCIe Gen 2, which means that all of its processes, even with the available lanes that are on there, I think it was an eight lane processor, was still reject, reject, um, restricted to Gen 2 there. Whereas there are more lanes and higher bandwidth lanes on all of the uh, 21 and 22 generation devices we've seen thus far. And therefore, we're gonna see CPUs that can support more features, more hardware services, on their build. Another area, of course, is memory. These newer generation CPUs that are going to be arriving in newer devices, be they available now or available in the future, compared with that of the 920, are going to provide you more memory. The maximum memory of this device is 8 gig, 4 gig soldered by default, and 4 as an upgrade. Even the you know the lowest of the low newer generation device in the 21 and 22 series from Synology has 16 gig minimum and 32 gig being regularly mentioned much like the 1522 so the newer generation devices and their cpu memory combination and the um, pci architecture and chips of those devices are 100 percent guaranteed to be better now let's get a little more specific shall we let's talk about the ds923 there a little bit because even though we've got no solid confirmed or at least official confirmed information on that device we do know the 923 plus is coming and on top of that we've got to wonder about network connectivity the reason i bring that up is when the ds920 was launched in summer 2020 when this device arrived on the scene a number of users myself included were a little bit bummed out that it arrived with one gigabit ethernet there on the rear now of course 2.5 gigabit ethernet is nowhere near as available or ubiquitous as one gbe it's been around for decades of course however People want more from their storage. And right now you can get internet connections that are greater than 1 GBE. That means, oh, not oh, just 1 GB, 1 GB, 1 gigabit. So the result is you potentially could have a cloud provider like Google or whatever that you're accessing remotely that would be faster via the internet potentially than a NAS on a local area network because of 1 GBE. And given that these devices are four bays in the case of the uh, 920 there, even bog standard hard drives that give you about 160 meg you put those in a ray 5 or an shr you're massively outscaling the one or two gbe ports there on the rear now newer generation devices are starting to roll out with better ports we're seeing synology's routers arrive with 2.5 gbe and there is the question of whether the ds923 plus is going to have greater than gigabit ethernet connectivity now based on the way synology have been you know, releasing a few of the 22 series thus far, I think we can make an educated guess that the newer generation device is almost certainly going to have optional 10G. A 923 is almost certainly going to have that. Synology have gone to the trouble of rolling out a micro 10 GBE adapter, and I cannot see the logic of them rolling out an adapter like this for about 120 nicker for just two NASes, the 1522 and the RS422. And I think it's tremendously likely that the newer generation 923 is going to arrive with support of this adapter. Now, if it does arrive with that, I can't see them using 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on their NAS. If they were going to, I think they would have on this device, but I do think it's going to arrive as a 1 gig with optional 10 GBE to maintain that price point that we've seen previously. Now, I'm not going to say I think that is out of this world fantastic. Personally, I would have liked to have seen, and maybe it still will, a 923 with 10 GBE by default or 2.5 GBE, but there's no avoiding that at least now we're starting to see Synology 
stretch its muscles outside of one gig of Ethernet. And if you are looking at a NAS and you are wondering about that bandwidth performance, not maybe not just for today, but you've got to think two to three years into the future, as 2.5 GBE is starting to arrive at the same cost as 1 GBE, with ISP routers having 2.5 GBE, USB adapters knocking around for about $20 to upgrade your devices to two and a half times single network speeds. If these are things that you want to get on board with, this isn't the NAS for you. The 920 will cap you very early doors in a way that the newer generation almost certainly will not. And finally, this last one is a theory, okay? And unlike other things where I've talked about my predictions before, or I've been, you know, talked about leaks and rumors that we've seen online and bits and data sheets and stuff like that, this next bit is a hunch. It is guesswork. And maybe you're watching this video in six to 12 months, and you can tell me in the comments whether I was flat out wrong or flat out right. But right now, when the 1522 arrived on the scene with that Ryzen processor, a lot of users, again, myself included, were like, there's a good chance a 923 is going to have that same CPU. But at the same time, we've seen information online alluding to a DS223 Plus and a DS423 Plus. Now, traditionally, these have been dual-core Intel-powered NASes, okay? Now, these would be follow-ups to the DS220 Plus and the DS420 Plus. However, if Synology went down the road, a 923 would have that Ryzen, you know, optional 10G, whatever, if it did have that, I think they would maintain um, the 2-bay and the 4-bay at the 223 Plus and the 423 Plus at an Intel standard, or at the very least, an embedded graphic standard. I think they would use that tier to facilitate the home or media user market and push the 923 into much more of an SMB kind of um, file station server bracket there, much like they did with the 1522 Plus, making it a bit more highfalutin. Again, this is all theory, but if I had to look at their portfolio, if they're making that shift and you can see the middle of their portfolio changing its position with the six bays there, and particularly when we saw the release of the 12 bay expansion, we saw things move up the field in terms of their portfolio and shift things along. So I think if it looks increasingly that the 15 uh, sorry a 923 plus would arrive with that um, AMD Ryzen R 1600 processor I do think they would maintain the 223 plus and the 43 plus as embedded graphics tiers be they um, AMD with uh, Vega embedded or they'd stick with an Intel maybe the N40 uh, N4505 or the J6 um, uh, 6412. Now, again, guesswork. But the reason I bring all of that up right now is even if that doesn't happen, right now, the 920 would still be massively outpaced by any of the devices I've talked about. So the 923, for all of its good hardware there, it's still not the newest kid on the block. And I think given that we've got enough information here that there will be four new plus series boxes, uh, a 723, a 923, a 223, and a 423, and J series boxes as well for next year. I think it's very, very valid for us to think, to stay on the fence rather than go for the 923 until we know more about this new restructuring um, of Synology's portfolio, which we're clearly seeing happen right now. But this has been, should you buy the 920 plus? If you are interested in learning more, there is a link in the description where I am updating as much as I can. Yes, right now this device is available. If you're watching this six months or even 12 months in the future, maybe it's obsolete. You can't buy it new and you're watching this to see if it's worth buying secondhand. And if that's the case, I'd probably say yes. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a great week. Like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.